have long chat first before yeah before we have uh, our next uh, programs for you. So what is the sensei name? Sensei name is called Daniel. All right. So next, <laughs> any questions? Yeah. All right. Please. Yeah, uh, Sensei Daniel. So when I want to buy a violin, how do I know that the violin is a good violin? Okay. Uh, that's a very great question, and I'm really looking forward to someone asking me because that's something I really would like to talk about: good violin and violin suits you. So first of all, we uh, say compare violin as a human being. A good person might not be the best person for you, right? Uh, some woman, beautiful, very nice, but she's a good woman, but he may not be the woman for you. So a good violin is one thing, a violin sees you is another. We go to buy a pair of shoes, for example. The high heel shoes, the low heel shoes, the sneakers, the slippers, and all kinds of shoes. We cannot say which shoes are the best, but what the shoes and the size suits you. So to find a good violin is not a problem at all. The main good violins in the world is not is not difficult, but to find a violin suits you. Now it's a lifetime question. Many people, they spend all life, they couldn't find someone for themselves, same like violin. So, uh, the violin is so critical, it can determine if you are successful or not. Many violinists, they work as hard as others they did not succeed. Why? Because they don't have a tool to suit them. It's like someone has the best high heel shoes in the world, but went for the marathon. So it, it, it wouldn't, work, wouldn't work. So this is something very professional, very narrow field. It's not everyone has this uh, ability. Many people think the violin teachers knows everything, which is not true. Violin teachers are the teachers which they know how to teach violin, how to bring the technique to the kids. But to the violin itself, that's another profession. You need someone in this profession to help you to find. It's like a, a, a tailor. Tailor is a tailor. A coordinator is another. The tailor can make a, a, a suit for your clothes for your exact same size but not, not be your style then you need someone else an artist to say oh this kind of costume or this kind of clothes is best for you so i cannot answer this question concretely say when i want to buy a violin uh, what is the best for me when i was oh i was talking so much then I told you nothing, right? So, first of all, set up a price. You have a price in your mind, because a violin can be very expensive. Can be very expensive, very good, but very bad for you. So, it does not really depend on the price. Someone says, oh, we are rich. My dad is a, 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 a rich guy. So I just buy the most expensive one, one. So sometimes the cheaper one may be much better for you or for your children. So everyone, the family has a budget. Don't over your budget. Just do your budget first. Say we would like to spend this amount for this value first, right? Because you can't buy a violin for the whole life. You just buy, oh, I don't know my kid is going to play a lot, or maybe he's very talented. We can use it later, but now we just think of the five years. We we'll buy a violin which our children can use for five years. So set a price. So in this place range, you must know uh, how big your kids is going to be. Because size is very important. 
even though the violin, full size violin, look all the same. But it's just a one centimeter difference, makes a huge difference in the position. You just, this little cannot reach it, every time you play, you suffer. So, first, the size is very important. And uh, we see a limited budget. If we have a very small budget, think of the bow first. The bow is much more important than violin. Every year, there's an international competition. All competition violinists borrow violins. They borrow violins from Stradivarius, from Cornelius, or Amati, but they don't borrow bows. Why? It's always taking a field from the right hand. They cannot change bow. So, when you have a limited budget, think of buying a better bow, a bow which we can practice, we can really learn instead of on the violin. Most we say a violin and bow is like a third, a 30% of the cost for the bow. <coughs> If you have one thousand dollars, you will start a budget. You spend three hundred for the bow, but not for the new violin. If I were to pay, it, I would pay five hundred, even eight hundred for the bow first. For the violin, it's only for the playing condition is okay, because violin has no limit. But if you have a good bow, which you can practice, you can learn. Then you can start. Then you can easily change the violin later. But it's very difficult for the kids to change the bow because they all build the technique on the bows. So, talk to the teacher and try as many as possible. Because I don't play violin, my wife doesn't play violin, my kids doesn't play violin. We only trust the teacher, of course we have to trust the teacher, but ask the teacher to bring at least three violins, four or five bows, ask the kids to play. At least you can hold it if you're comfortable. You hold it comfortable. The kids will know the difference. They will know, even a beginner. They say, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And they all look the same, but try, you play. Then you spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know the difference. So. They choose the violins and bows. The kids feel the most comfortable first. That's the first step. So this question I can only ask you because I can talk for like a one week or two weeks or one month or, 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 or year only for this one question. Thank you very much. Hope that's answer your questions. All right. Oh, very valuable. Bow. Yeah, we should invest more in bow. <laughs> so yeah. So how about Malaysia? Malaysia always welcome you. <laughs> uh, one thing I found in Malaysia is that I don't feel this is a foreign country at all. Um, I, I went to the mall you know, with uh, my sister and we went to, you know, went to the mall and I was trying to write, I was trying to speak English and no one replied English at all. Everyone speaks Chinese to me. I asked uh, maybe more than 10 shops and I was like, excuse me, uh, can I uh, recharge? Uh, oh, you don't need me, let me again. So, so, this is not uh, Malaysia. <laughs> the Chinese language is so strong here, and the Cantonese too, of course. So, and also, I really like this uh, multi-culture, you know. Uh, you have different culture, people with different language, and you know, live together. This is something I don't like. I, I, I cannot say I don't like it, it's, it's, it's too rude. I, I only say China and Japan is a, a little bit boring for me because the culture is so pure. Japan, really, they are all Japanese society. The Japanese language is the language. Even me, my name is Daniel. In Japan, my name is not Daniel. My name is Okami Yoshinami. So you got to have a Japanese name. Even in my Japanese ID, my uh, uh, health insurance, uh, my everything is all coming with Shilani. So it's not a Daniel chamber. So it's a pure nation country, also China too. Uh, but uh, in Malaysia, you see different uh, 
religion, different culture, different food. Uh, you can see go to the Indian restaurant, you can see some other restaurant, you see maybe different kind of people. I think it's great. Um, why I came to Sabah? Because I thought I want to buy a, a, a second house or something, retire in Sabah somewhere, you know. So I went to went there. Then I found uh, maybe not the best place for me, so I came here. <laughs> I, I love I love here, yes. I'm sure this is not my last time. We will see each other again. Thank you very much. <laughs>
the bow, if you don't use with the finger, almost you cannot control. Yeah. If you use this straight, you also, you, you don't use the finger also. But if you put the little finger on this spot, on this spot then you can. Then you can hold the bow like a sword, you can fight with people. <laughs> right? It's like, a, it's like a name, you get up your fingers on here. So little fingers are very important. Play violin, ten fingers, not one is straight. Like uh, if you walk on, you on one toe is straight, can you walk uh, naturally? No, you cannot. So all the fingers are wrong. All the fingers, all the fingers on the violin. And like this. It's only fingers. Uh, others, uh, I think you will want to. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. From uh, Russian school, uh, like a uh, Kokan, Ostra, uh, they play very, very, very well, very, very strong. Another school is uh, like uh, Vienna, like uh, French Vienna. They play very, very, very sweet, very soft. So, uh, Basically, uh, for the Russian school, they use uh, very much uh, a strong bow and the speed with uh, you put it and the, the, the point 
which, which if you put a very strong, you can't. You can't. They have to go. I'll go here. But if you want to be soft, you can't. Ah, you have to. Thank you. 